All right, we're here at New York Comic Con 2013. We're winding down on Sunday, and uh, I'm here with, uh, now I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this right, Scott Neatlich. Neatlich. Neatlich? Neatlich. Like, like night and Neatlich? Neatlich. Okay. Neatlich. Like two I, words. I'm half yeah. German, so whenever I see an IE, I always go like. Ugh. I'm sure in like the original German, it's probably something <laughs> like that, but for the past 50 years, it's been Neatlich. So okay, cool. Um, well, I'm, I'm here at your Maddie booth, and you've got a whole lot of Maddie Collector stuff out. You've got Castle Grayskull out for demo. Yep. Um, and uh, you guys had a panel earlier on. It sounds like you did a whole bunch of, uh, of chat and reveals there. Yes. Um, so I, I wanted to just mostly ask for the sake of you know making the most of your time, just a couple of specifics about a few particular things coming up. Um, I wanted to know, like, uh, first up, the motivation behind uh, Standar, uh, like how that project came together, because it, it, it uh, sort of popped up. Like, I, I'm a very casual fan. But uh, the Standar figure caught my attention immediately because of this, you know, the Stanley connection. And I was wondering, like, uh, was that a Stanley instigated thing, or was it more reaching out to Stanley uh, in, in kind of tribute? So it's part of a larger partnership between Mattel and Pow Entertainment. Okay. So as we announced in our panel at a Comic Con, um, Pow Entertainment, which is Stan's company, and Mattel have signed a, a large partnership agreement to produce some awesome new, you know, stuff like. The, the mind of Stan Lee and the power of Mattel. Yeah. So that'll be rolling out over the next, you know, few years, et cetera. And to commemorate that partnership, we wanted to do a Stan Lee something. And yeah, you know, yeah. we could have made a Stan Lee Hot Wheel. We could have made a Stan Lee Barbie doll. Who knows what that would have looked like? But you know, we wanted to do so. We decided to do a Stan Lee Masters of the Universe figure. So it's it's a figure commemorating that partnership. Is what it, that's where it came from. Okay. Cool. Yep. So here it is. Oops. He's uh, chilling out in there. If we don't knock over everybody. There we go. Yep, so here he is without his mask on. So there's okay. Standar. So yeah, it is in Stan Lee's face. And then you can just slip on his helmet there right over. And then, <laughs> of course, his trademark cosmic goggles. And there you go, there's Standar. And uh, the helmet, it, it makes me think a bit of Galactus when I'm looking at it. Yeah, no, it was definitely, uh, you know, very kind of influenced by the 1960s work of Stan, etc. And it was, uh, it was designed by Ruben Martinez. Yeah, yeah. At Mattel, and Stan got to see all. We, we did a couple different designs, and this is the one Stan approved. We actually did a few bios too. So he had he had a, uh, quite a hand in the process yeah, of designing yeah. the figure, putting it together. So we basically brought him a few. We knew we wanted to do a Stanley figure, so we brought him a few different designs and a few different bios, and yeah. he picked the one he wanted, and you know we worked with him. And yeah, he was definitely a collaborative effort. And uh, there's Standar. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he'll be at Kamikaze on November first. Okay. And that's... afterwards on MaddieCollector.com. And uh, just going off of Masters of the Universe Classics as a whole, and, and a lot of the Maddie Collector things going on, now you guys have, uh, in, in the past couple of years, because this is a bit of a, this, this line's been around for quite a while now, and it, and it has been stated that it's kind of entering its final year or two of, of the big list it wants to accomplish of characters to represent. Yes. Um, it's used a subscription service, and DC's also entered subscription services, as well as uh, Ghostbusters and Voltron. And that's a model I've seen coming up more and more over the last couple of years as a, a, a means to involve collectors in the process and to gauge interest to make a uh, kind of a, a, a get around the big box retailer risks of the end cap and of having things sit on shelves, you know, unforeseen yeah. circumstances. Um, but and the subscription services have, in and of themselves, had their ups and downs. Like of re you know, recently, uh, the DC drive did not quite make the top mark. Yep. Um, and it didn't so, even make the bottom mark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so uh, you know, you've been involved in a lot of those subscription drives, and so you've got a lot of experience in that. Looking at it, do you feel like the subscription model is something that you think is kind of like the foreseeable future, or would you love to step out and, and try something new and just see if there's another science that could achieve the same results and and uh, and try another box, as it were? I mean, you know, we're, we're always looking at, you know, ways to get out more toys to fans. At the yeah. end of the day, when you're doing, you know, figure lines that are this deep, that are, you know, over 100, or in the case of DC, over almost like 250 characters deep, doing more characters is very much dependent on locking in customers. Yeah. Because like you said, you know, we, it, you know it's an inventory risk, and it's a lot of time and tooling and investment from design and, and packaging and marketing and sculpting. So in order to do that, that's why we need the subs, because it tells us, okay, you can move forward to this line because we know we have guaranteed sales. It's just kind of, it's really, things have changed over the last 10 years. The biggest thing being the cost to produce the figures is just on the rise. Yeah. Because figures are made of plastic, which is made from petroleum, which is gas. 
yeah. so oil. So and, and, and other companies have stated the, the difficulty they faced. Like Hasbro's Transformers line fa uh, went through a, a brief like one year dip as they had to readjust their design process to deal with rising gas costs. And uh, so I could see like a collector line like this being something where you've got to secure those numbers. And uh, the feeling I've always gotten from Maddie Collector to, as an entity is one of uh, just trying really hard to do like what it set out to do on day one, like like try to follow its letter as best as it can. And it feels like in the greater you know entity of Mattel, because there's this other stuff around, there's Monster High, there's, there's Max Steel, but the collector end, it feels like you guys are operating kind of uh, as like almost on your own boat in a way. Like you're attached to the greater ship of Maddie. But I mean, yeah. as illustrated perhaps like in the videos you put up where it's kind of just shot in your cubicle. Um, <laughs> It feels like you're kind of like almost. You guys are out on your own in a way. It, it feels not that not so much that Mattel's cut you loose and just told you to do what you want to do, but it feels like you're really having to fight to get this collector side of your your company's products to continue growing and continue moving. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's definitely a very different model from traditionally what Mattel does. You know, yeah. ninety nine percent of what Mattel does is sell to retailers. You know, everything from Fisher Price all through Hot Wheels Collector. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, Maddie was started specifically to address the needs of today's collector for, you know, more in-depth, you know, deep character selection. You know, I mean, it's a, you know, I mean, look, Strobo, you know, I mean, our, our convention figure right here. I mean, yeah. you're never going to see this at retail, a character that appeared in a magazine in like 1985 that was distributed in the UK. Yeah. You know, so it's like, that's, Maddie is, is so that we could do this. But again, we need to have the guaranteed customers to do it, which is why we use a submodel. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, and so what I mean is I've, I've always felt like because of you know having to operate entirely online, it's it's kind of like you guys are on your own in terms of drumming up the numbers. Like you can't really rely on media or on the shelf retail to, to build them up. It's kind of all on you. It's, and and you know I don't think you could operate without the internet, if you will. I mean the yeah. internet, you know, and the, the the message boards and the websites and the fan sites and doing these kind of things like we're doing right now. Yeah, this is what we could. This is what keeps Maddie going. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've been talking to the Four Horsemen as well and asking them about their thoughts on subscription models and, you know, because they've also done crowdsourcing projects. And uh, I know Masters, like, there is no media right now for Masters, so this is kind of, you know, where it's at. great DC comic. Oh, yeah, yeah, you've got a DC comic coming yeah. up, you've got the, uh, the DC crossover coming up. Um, going just outside of Masters for a second, you're, are you also related to the DC collector stuff coming out, or are you primarily Masters? Well, I work on everything that's on Maddie, and yeah. which includes the DC SKUs we do, like the, you know, we're doing the four signature series figures for 2014, even though the sub didn't go forward, there will be one figure each quarter, starting with Aquaman, Ice, Superboy, and Damien, yeah. and then Bound to, uh, Doomsday for San Diego Comic-Con, and then we'll have four quarterly Total Heroes figures. Total Heroes is the new retail line, yeah. it's a 9.99 six inch line, that, that's got the main guys at retail, your Batman, your Superman, your Flash, and then the characters that'll complement that, your more obscure collector aim characters like yeah. Black Manta, Batman Beyond, the Green Lantern Corps. And, and you've also got your efforts uh, involved with the prop replica side of things as well, the epic yes, prop yes, replica. Yes, yes, uh, the uh, awesome, awesome epic creation items like the Ecto Goggles here. Yeah. That'll The remaining stock of these will be on sale on Cyber Monday, yeah. uh, as well as the remaining stock of the Sky Sled behind me there. And then we have the Proton one, the Neutrino one, uh, this, this, this guy's amazing. So this guy comes out December 16th, only on Maddie Collector. And uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome there. I did hear about a Cross the Streams gimmick that uh, my friend Jared uh, had yeah, brought up. Yeah, if you have two of these and you aim them at each other, you're going to get a unique Crossing the Streams effect where this will light up white and the meter here uh, will have a different effect where it'll start going like wah, wah, yeah. where it tells you like you're probably doing something that's opening up a dimensional portal or something. But uh, with your efforts being pulled between, like, because you're pretty much like the, I see your face attached to all of these collector-oriented things out of Mattel, and you know, as I said, like, it seems like you're kind of not pulled thin, but it is your your efforts going everywhere. The energy is coming off you as we're talking here. Um, I'm a you, collector too. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Like, the reason that I, I you know, I, I pitched Maddie Collector a few years ago and have stuck with it is, I mean, you know, it's like the the old uh, you know hair club for men commercials. Yeah. Like I'm, you know, I'm the pride. You know, I run Maddie Collector, but I'm also a customer. Yeah, I'd be buying this stuff. But if you had your druthers, like uh, just as an example, the, the cubicle videos you do. Like if you had, say, access to a studio for that. Uh, sure, do, do if feel, I did. Yeah. Like, like, like if you if you could do it, do you think that would help? Like because uh, because a lot of your product reveals like. Due to you know the, the lack of a shooting space, a lot of your product reveal tends to happen through uh, other other folks you send the review samples out to. Right. Um, do you feel like 
you know, if, if, if you could, would you want to push for having some more in-house media making? Uh, some, oh, something I, to... I, would, I would advertise Maddie Collector on television if I could. I don't have the budget. Yeah, yeah. You know, Maddie Collector is a tiny, 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 tiny line in Mattel. Yeah. You know, Max Steel, Monster High, Hot Wheels, Barbie, DC, WWE. Those are the big ones for Mattel that, you know, bring in the, yeah. you know, that keep the company going. Maddie Collector is done for the love of the toys and the love of the fans and the love of the brands. And it's like what I always say, we'll keep making them as long as we have customers buying them. But, you know, things like the DZ sub or the Ghostbusters sub, like the Ecto-1 pre-sale that couldn't get enough customers, so we're not going to make an Ecto-1. Simple as that. We didn't get enough DC subscribers, so we can't have a DC sub. It's, it's very much... You guys buy them, we'll make them. But if you don't buy them, we can't make them. With, with your connection to the Four Horsemen and, and their own experience now in uh, fan source and crowd source efforts to create some of their own original ideas, yeah. uh, do you feel like somewhere down the line you could start tapping that experience? Uh, like uh, the way that with the Ravens, for instance, they laid out kind of the budget of the creation of the figures and stated that that's where a lot of this this support needs to drum up, like the very specifics that, of... That, I mean, that pretty much, that is the sub. I mean, the sub yeah. is our Kickstarter. Basically, like we showed us everything we could, everything that had been all the way through FPR stage. Yeah. But, you know, so yes, I mean, that is what we do. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking more in terms of just like, um, say you want to make the Ecto-1, you really want to make the Ecto-1. I did and, really want to make the Ecto-1. But, but like, now you've, you've like punched King Matty off the throne, you sat down like, alright, we're going to figure out a way to do this. And uh, I know, like, lay out, like, all right, this is going to be like a 26 month project. And it and is. It was a 26 month project. And yeah. we put the product, we put it, you know, the plans and the, the costs and the features out at Comic Con, and we put it up for pre sale, you know, yeah. like a Kickstarter. But it didn't get enough customers. And, and that was, because that's to hit also a certain production level, right? Like a certain right. number of units. Yeah, we can't go, we can't commit to a project, especially something as big as the Ecto 1 or, you know, the castle here, yeah. unless we have the minimum number of customers committed to it. It's simple as that. Yeah, like yeah. it's not possible for Maddie Collector to operate on, say, the lower indie levels of production, like a, uh, a 100, 200 piece. Yeah, no, not not at all. No, we, we have minimum quotas that we have to meet with yeah. our vendors. And, and, and to me, that's what makes me so interested in, in like, the discussion we're having, because I feel like, you know, as an entity, Maddie Collector is almost kind of in this in-between zone of you you have the passion and, and uh, the methods and, and the drive of an indie toy company while being beholden to the production numbers and the and the practices of a larger company. Yep. And, and surely that must be like a, a difficult battle to deal with in presenting all this stuff. It is, but, but don't call me Shirley. All right. I, well, I was going to call you Scott, but I can call you whatever you want if you like. <laughs> Airplane joke. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's always a give and take. You know. Yes. So we, you know, it's like we, we are. We're kind of like a small company within a larger company. Yeah. You know, we have the great backbone of Mattel and the name of Mattel and all the resources, but at the same time, we have the limitations of a smaller fan base. But as you know, it's the same line I kind of always give: as long as fans will buy these things, we'll keep making them. The Motu yeah. fans stepped up. You know, we hit 120 percent of the minimum of tier two. For DC, we only hit 63% of Tier 1. For the Ecto 1, we only got like 30 something percent of Tier 1. And with, with things like the DC subscription specifically, it's not like you can, as an entity, just tap into, say, DC Direct and say, hey, yo, give us a hand. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because that, that's what I've also really wanted to get more concrete is what Maddie Collector, not Mattel, but Maddie Collector is as an entity. And it, it seems like you guys are in the struggle of an indie company, but under the umbrella of a bigger one. It's, it's a very interesting situation. It is very unique, yes. It's a yeah. very, I don't think there's anything like Maddie Collector. I'll, I'll throw down, just to, to quit to end it and not take up too much more of your time, uh, something I brought up with, with Cornboy of the Four Horsemen, and it's kind of a selfish thing, but I like to just raise up the, the notion. Um, you guys are covering the three live-action He-Man movie characters that you're able to cover in Blade, yes. Sarad, and Gwildor. Yeah, we have Blade right here, so he's the first one of them. And I'm, I'm one of the rare types for whom uh, specifically, the bad guys of the live-action movie are my biggest passion for He-Man. Um, now, I, I, uh, this guy didn't have a figure, and I, I spoke to Cornboy, and we got we, we know the specifics is you can only really right now make figures of those who had toys in the 80s. Exactly. Um, yeah, we but, don't have rights to the 87 movie. Yeah, yeah. But uh, my question is, like, and specifically in the case of my Mark? personal fanboy thing, oh, not him. Langella Skeletor. Oh, yeah. Um, Langellator, if you will. Langellator? Um, in that case, would, now is that just an outright impossibility, or would that just be the case of needing to put a lot of resources into pursuing the greater license of that movie? It, it, so, yeah, it's basically, the bottom line is that, you know, there's, there's, 
there's no money there for, for you know anyone because the runs are so small and having to pay the royalty for the film on top of that you know we basically do this because we love the line yeah. but we can't you know well one the license isn't even available yeah yeah you know, and but, I mean in the hypothetical situation that one were to pursue the license it would also need to hit the the bigger company thing of the production runs and uh, and etc I'm guessing I mean we'd love to do it but the license is not available yeah. and it's, I mean, so it's like it's outright unavailable, like not even really pursuable. Correct. Okay, that, that's the thing I've been wondering about is whether or not it's a case of someone has it and, and a negotiation needs to be made or if it is just out there in the ether right now. No, the bottom line is it's not available to license for, you know, that, that license is not available. And okay. uh, we can do Blade and, and Strahd and Quill Door because they have toys in the old line, but anything beyond that, you know, we, the thing is, you know, at the end of the day, we ask other companies to respect Mattel's copyrights. Yeah. You know, so we have to do the same thing and respect theirs. We're not going to cheat it and do like a gold skeleton. Yeah, we like made that. we made Langelator. He's a man in a black cloak. Yeah, like that, that's kind of cheating. You know, yeah. we we expect other companies to respect our copyrights. Yeah. So it's not fair for us to trample on someone else's. Because my, my hope is, uh, in light of Blade Sarod and Gwildor, uh, once once you know, and, and perhaps once. Every MOTUC has run its course in the next year or two, as it is right now. Um, the current holders of that copyright, and perhaps just to, to add another little nudge to the end of MOTUC, um, if Blades Rod and Gwildor have the numbers there, you know, hypothetically, could one wave those at the copyright holders of the live action movie and say, well, if you're interested, we're here, but it's... Anything is possible, but honestly, to manage ex fans' expectations, yeah. I, I wouldn't really I mean, Yeah, I, I'm just thinking of like what the processes are underneath that, like where... It does, I mean, those kind of things are, you know, that's not something you can go into publicly, I mean, oh, yeah, I understand. proprietary yeah, yeah. licensing. Yeah, but yeah. the bottom line is the license isn't available right now for us. We don't have the license. We can do Sarod, Blade, and Gwildor, but that's it. But it wouldn't be a poor thing for fans to pick up those three figures, take a photo, send it to say, you know, the, the I don't actually know the company who has the license. Warner Brothers. Or send it to Warner Brothers and say, hey, Mattel's making these toys. They made these three. Just, we want to tell you we have the interest. It's, you know, hands off, leave it at that. I think everybody, everyone knows there's interest. No one's, yeah. no one is living in a bubble and thinking there's not interest. And Warner's a fantastic partner of ours. We work yeah. with them on DC, you know, Wizard of Oz, Harry Potter. They're one of our best licensing partners. Masters of the Universe, the 1987 film, is just not available on license. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's close this up um, with just step, let's step two years in the future. Two and years let's in the future. Let's just say Masters of the Universe the classics. Quick. <laughs> that would be 2015. I, I dropped in the river, I'm sorry. It doesn't work on water, you know, Jeff. Uh, well, let's say Masters of the Universe Classics does run its course, like as has been hypothesized, you know, it finishes its character line and it, it, it sets off and it goes to Lothlorien and you know hangs out with Gandalf and all those other characters. Okay, sure. Um, Cross streams there. Yeah, uh, so now that's that now that you know Behemoth has sat down and finally just kinda of gone to sleep, where would you want to take the huge amount of effort you've been putting into this and take it next? Like say Thundercats? It seems like a one of people bandy around, Brave Star. You know, uh, I could spin my wheels and spit out a hundred licenses I'd love personally to work on. But is, is there one that really like you just sit there and you think, man, when this is done, I wanna just sink my fingers into this next project and try to you know, forward. nothing I can honestly legally comment on. I can't say like, you know, oh, I really want to make, you know, X. I can't talk, you know, it's not something I can really comment on. I mean, of course, there's personal passions of mine for some licenses, some that fans aren't even asking for. They're like, what does I want? But, I mean, there's always going to be new toys, collectors one. Really, we'll always try to, you know, we're always looking at new licenses. I mean, we acquired yeah. Ultron and Ghostbusters. But, like, uh, th this question is a bit too, like, your, your name is carrying too much weight to say something that's going to be I mean, recorded. Yeah, I can't case. like really yeah. say, oh, Scott Knightley would like to make X, because what if I say that, and then some other company says, oh, let's go get that license yeah. you know? Well, in the realm of impossibility, I don't know, Pacific Rim, let's just say that. Okay, you know, just for the sake of argument. Pacific Rim Masters of the Universe Classics. Okay. Let's see that coming up next. All right, coming 2015. Sure. <laughs> All right, well, thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. I uh, hope that uh, Comic-Con's treated you well. Uh, it looks like, like myself, it looks like it's run you a bit ragged as well, like kind of running around, keeping up the booth. It's a long show, but we had a lot of fun. It was great to see so many fans, to, to show up the castle. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people stole I, okay, to the castle. I, so, I, wanted, I wanted you to be yeah. the one to bring that up, because I wasn't sure how much I wanted to talk about it, but I heard uh, about this. Stinks. Am I correct in, like, in my imagination is someone Putting their foot on that pedestal is grabbing a piece and going like, ah! Oh, no, no, it was more like.
uh, you know, somebody popped off some pieces and the accessories. Unfortunately, this is the same model that we have to have for Kamikaze next week. So now, I mean, really, it's just I feel bad for the fans because the fans of Kamikaze are now not going to have a complete castle to look at because some jerks here in New York stole all of the accessories. Well, would you say, let's, let's put the word out to those thieves if they can at least come to Kamikaze and put the pieces back That'd on, be great. even discreetly. Or if you guys are still here today, like, can you please return them? Like, the thing is, is we put a lot of trust in our fans to have the castle out here like this to touch. We wanted fans to touch and play with it and experience with it, how cool it is. And that trust was kind of broken because people stole all the accessories. So. Well, that is a bummer yeah, regardless of one's thoughts on any they issue. Took, they took the trap jaw, they took the horde trooper, they took the glimmer. They took, uh, yeah, we kind of lost a lot of, a lot of, we had it at a power con and nobody was even at next to it. And it was fine, the whole show. Well, you got, Here in New York, people took all the stuff. You got, you got hella rubber bands on there now. Yeah, we rubber banded everything. <laughs> we had extreme measures with rubber bands, so. Yeah, guys, please don't take our stuff. It's, it's not <laughs> us. I mean, you're not stealing. You're, 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 you're depriving future fans of getting to enjoy this model at conventions is what you guys are doing. All right, well, uh, ending on a, on a uh, bit of a moderate note, we'll hope that those guys just sort of pop up out of the woodwork and throw things back yeah. on. If anyone sees a gold <laughs> skull show up on eBay, please refer it to me. But yeah, so October uh, 15th, you'll get the Lord Troopers, Mantena, Lord Dactus, the Great Wars pack. Guys, you know, as long as you guys keep subscribing and keep buying, we'll try to keep making it. It's all up to you guys. You know, we can only make these toys as long as we have fans buying them. All right, well, thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. And uh, have a good last hour or so of the con. Yeah, we're counting down. 60, 59, 58, 7, 94, hot. Hi.